Lord Jesus, crucified, forsaken in death, raised in glory, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who brings rest to our souls, please give peace to Alejandro Ben Uy forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn and are in pain. Bless the family and friends of Den Uy who gather around him today. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh, loving God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant, Alejandro Ben Uy, whom you have called out of this world. And because he put his hope and trust in you, please command that Ben be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto Ben, O Lord. May Alejandro Ben Uy rest in peace. May the soul of Alejandro Ben Uy and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining this vigil service and prayer for Alejandro Ben Uy. Thank you. 
Mas ayer ni nang extension call. Meron pala dyan eh. Meron yan. Ano mo nalang isaksak bro. Di kahit dito may lagay yung speaker. Meron yan eh. Kaya nga sinasabi. O tika pa ganun eh. Ano pala eh. Hindi makikita. Hindi tama na yan.
Hello. We will start the uh, Crucial Rite in a few moments. Uh, calling all the culturalists. Do you have these copies of the songs? Please ask the Brother Ephraim. Hello, hello. Pwede mo ilakas pa? Uh, excuse me. Um, please have the copy or hand copy of the song. And uh, Apron Biscara will be giving it to you. A copy of the Corsillo songs for Corsillo rights, especially for those who are Corsillistas. Please have a copy of this. Golden Cross. Doon pa lang sila pupunta dito? Dapat na dito na sila. Ano, dito pa lang pagkakanta. Hindi, doon na lang sila kakanta. Pagkitaas pupunta lang dito. Oh. Those kursilistas, please, you may come forward. 
to lead our uh, Cursillo Wright song, please. I'm going to talk first, oh, and then... Can you play a, like a few chords, just so I can hear the volume before you play? Like I don't play. I, that, that's the only thing I have. No, I'm saying, can you play... I, 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 hooked, I connected it to the church system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you play a few chords, just so I can see how it sounds like? We're now going to start the uh, Cursillo Rite. Good morning. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Our sincere condolences to the family of Brother Alejandro or Ben Uy. And our thoughts and prayers are with Sister Delia. And uh, his families. My name is uh, Ruben Catabas. I'm a former post-Cursillo chairperson of the Filipino Cursillos and Christianity in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Today, I am conducting the Cursillo Rite for Brother Ben Uy. Nakagawian na po namin, or customarily, Cursillo Rite is performed to all our departed Cursillistas at the request of the family. Brother Ben leave his Cursillo at the Divine Word Center in Riverside, California, and he belongs to class number seven, the Curia of St. Andrew, on October 17, to 20, 1991. His rector, rector was the uh, late Brother Ned Pasqua. When he graduated in the Cursillo, Brother Ben became a very active member of the St. Bernard in this church, Ultraya Center, together with his wife, Delia Uy. You know, there are many stories about uh, Brother Ben, and one of the uh, the thing about him is uh, he is uh, um, what you call the aficionados of the of breeding the uh, cockfighting roosters, right? Kaya Brother Ben, magaka okay okay ka na kay kay San Pedro. 
dahil si San Pedro mahilig sa mga tinali, mga mga uh, sasabunging manok. The course in the rites come in three parts. The first part is the singing of a love song, which we call it Manyanita, meaning early dawn. When our departed brother Ben attended the Corsilio retreat, I'm sure he was serenaded with the same love song as a way of welcoming him in the Corsilio family. Now that he was gone with the Lord, we are going this, this, the, the, to sing the same song as a way of saying goodbye to him. Also, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, during the time when we were in the Corsilio, we joined in praying and singing in the chapel of the candlelight for the glory of God. Today, after the Manyanit song, we will also sing this song for our beloved brother Ben as a sign of our brotherly love for him. Uh, may I call on all Kursilista if you want to stand up and let all sing the Manyanita song.
brothers and sisters, let's sing in the chapel. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, my dear friends, the second part of the Corsillo rites is the transferring of the Corsillo cross to his son, Alec Hain, by uh, brother Larry Dunca. May I call on brother Larry Dunca, please? Uh, where are we? The second part of the Crusader Rite is at the transferring of the Crusader Cross to his son, uh, Alekine, by Brother Larry Dunca, uh, one of the oldest Crusaderistas in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, FCIC. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, before we sing the third song, I would like you to know that there is a very interesting end, end part 
of the song, which is the ballad of the Golden Cross. And it goes like this. Then one day, he met his fate. His worried wife, she knelt and prayed. His brothers came and told her first about her man and his last request. Pin the cross on my son's chest. He too will be Corsilius' best. He takes my place. There is no loss. Another man of the golden cross. You know, my dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, before we sing the whole song, let me tell you a story behind this song, the Ballad of the Golden Cross. You know, in the beginning, the Corsilio movement was reserved for men only. A group of Corsilistas on their way to do the apostolic duties would sometimes travel long distances, leaving their wives waiting and praying for their safe return. One day, coming back home after doing their apostolic duties, they got into an accident. One of the Kursilista brothers died. Before he died, he asked his fellow Kursilista to tell his wife his last request. To pin his cross, or golden cross, the uh, Corsilio insignia. This is the cross of St. James. And this was the uh, original Corsilio cross. If you see this cross, it means it is from the Corsilio. Uh, you can find this in the, what is it? In, in one of the church in Spain. Oh. Yeah. And uh, according to this story, uh, the, uh, the, the, the guy who was almost dying, he told one of the uh, Corsilistas to pin the cross, the Corsilio insignia, on his son's chest. Um, May I call on Brother Larry? Um, and uh, can you do the uh, pinning of the cross, bro? And uh, not right now. When, when we reach the, uh, that portion, pin the cross on the song, then you pin it. Mm. And uh, also, may I call on Anna Kane? To, to stand up here, uh, close to the casket. Where's Anna Kane? Huh? Oh, Anna Kane. Um, Brother Larry, go to. Okay, brothers and sisters, especially those Kursilistas that start singing the Ballad of the Golden Cross.
the cross. Brother Larry. Uh, this part will be a prayer of commendation. May I call on Brother Ed Pareja, please, to lead the prayer of commendation. Yeah. You come back, come over here. And they have a copy of this. There's a prayer of commendation there. Oh, okay, please, Brother Ed Preha, the uh, former Ultreya Center coordinator in this church, St. Bernard. Prayers of commendation for all. All powerful and merciful God, we commend to you our brother Alejandro Hoy your servant, in your mercy and love, blot out the sin that he commended through your human weakness in this world. Let him live in the forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy for us, you turn the darkness of death in the dawn of new life. Show compassion to your people in their sorrow. Be our refuge and the strength to live past in the darkness and this grief to the peace of life in your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us, conquer death, by rising again, restore to life. May we then go forward early to meet him after our life on earth. Be united with our brothers and sisters where every tears will be wiped away. And we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ed. Now let's go to the third part of the Corsilio Rites. The third part of the, of the Corsilio Rites is uh, singing of a Corsilio theme song. You know what's the Corsillo theme song? Except the uh, Corsillistas. Do you know the Corsillo theme song? Anybody knows? Nobody knows about the Corsillo theme song? Okay. The Corsillo theme song is the De Colores. At this time, I like to call on all Kursilistas to please form two lines or line around the casket, except at the back, at only in the front, but don't block the front. Please. Don't just, uh, and then. Maybe on the right and on the left. Even though uh, those, those Kursilistas, whether you are graduated in the Kursilio a long time ago in the Philippines or in Spain, you may join us. You are considered also our brother or sister Kursilistas. Please join us. And uh, while we are singing the De Colores, we invite everyone to view and pay respect to our departed brother Ben and offer our condolences to the family members. Also, 
May I request everyone to observe the six feet social distancing uh, and avoid shaking hands or cheek-to-cheek -cheek greetings to the family as much as possible. Just my suggestion. We ask that non kursilista do the viewing first, followed by the kursilistas. Now, brothers and sisters, let's start singing the decolores in a small, in a slow tempo.
Thank you, brothers and sisters, especially to the family. And now, the conclusion. That concludes our crusader rights. At this point, on behalf of the Filipino Cursilios in Christianity, I would like to offer our, chief, our deepest sympathy to all family members of our departed brother Alejandro or Ben Uy. Have a nice day. Thank you and God bless. Now, next is the mass, the holy mass. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Good morning. May the God of hope give you the fullness of peace, and may the Lord of life be always with you. In the waters of baptism, Alejandro died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. On the day of his baptism, he was clothed in Christ. May he now share the fullness of God's love forever. Amen. Now, I know you always called him Ben, and I had a flashback in the sacristy. I told the sacristan that when my father's cousin, Celestine, died, I only knew him by the name Selly, and at the graveside, after I'd done all the services for Celestine, 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 a woman who I did not know, came right up and got in my face and said, couldn't you have called him Ben just once? I said, I didn't know they called him Ben. Well, I know you call him Ben. But there will be a mixture between Alejandro and Ben, but mostly I'm going to say Alejandro because that's his baptismal name. And there's a real richness in our faith about, we even say God calls us by, the, by that name of baptism. And I understand in Nigeria or Uganda or one of the African countries that when a baby is born, even though they maybe know the name even when the baby's in the womb, that uh, until the baby's baptized, if somebody comes and says, what's your baby's name? They say, no name, no name. And, and they know what that means. Oh, you're not baptized yet. The moment you're baptized, that's the name that God calls you by. So Alejandro, Ben, Pops, uh, you know, Grandpa, whatever, we're all the same, okay? And we're here to celebrate him and honor him and also to ask God to bless the family especially and close friends so that you can be strengthened and comforted and consoled and helped during this time of grieving.
Please be seated. We will begin with the eulogy this morning so that all of these words in this eulogy are part of our prayer and part of our celebration. Uh, before we get started, I uh, just wanted to thank everyone uh, for coming to today's service, uh, especially everyone that traveled from out of town and from the Philippines. I was at the airport. Uh, I was getting ready to board a flight to L.A. Uh, when my brother Alvin called me. And for whatever reason, this call felt different. Whatever was on the other side of this phone call, I knew that it would change everything. Dad just passed away. And that's all I could remember him mustering over the phone. And that was that. I hung up and I just stood there in the boarding line looking at the world around me and it's unchanged. And yet everything in my entire world had been turned upside down. That was Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. In the past three years, I saw my dad every day multiple times a day. He would come over the house and tend to his chickens, and as, as I'm sure most of you guys know by now, my dad, had a, my dad had, a, had a very healthy relationship with chickens. Um, and so outside the occasional, you know, like, morning dad, how are you, have you eaten, um, we rarely talked about anything substantial. But every so often, he would open up and tell me stories about his life and some of, the, some of the things he had to endure, some of the, you know, his regrets and some of his proudest achievements. So to distill his life in a few words would be a huge disservice to him. But I'll do my best to speak on my family's behalf and to eulogize my father. Alejandro Uy. Ben, to most, was born May 18, 1945, in the Gupan City, Philippines. He was the firstborn son of Benito Pilar Uy. He has six younger siblings, Tessie, Antonio, Pablo, Abraham, Maria Fe, and Jesus. He graduated from Mapua Institute with a focus on mechanical engineering. And as the firstborn son of a traditional Chinese family, he decided to be part of the family business, which was a burgeoning grocery supply chain company that my uncle grandfather built. He married my mom, Delia Uy, on January 16th, 1972. And they had a family. Four very strapping young boys, Alvin, Alistair, Malachine and myself, Elaine, and eventually adding a little princess to that mix, Eileen. But when the opportunity presented itself, he moved his entire family to the United States on February 16, 1985, so that his children can pursue their American dream. He was a Freemason, a Cursalista, and was an active member of the Burger King Association. If you guys know what that is, um, you know. He worked at the Lowe's Hotel as a senior lead boiler room engineer up until his retirement on June, 30, uh, June 30th, 2016. And earlier this year, my parents celebrated their 50th anniversary. Now, um, from my conversations with him, he told me how hard it was at the beginning. So we didn't have a lot of money, but we found a way to make it work. But he longed for his previous life in the Philippines. He often talked about his family in reverence back home and how much he missed being around his father and his mother. But he eventually settled into his life here, raising us the best he could and finding peace in spending time with his friends and family and tending to his beloved chickens until the very end. 
he was happy, and he was content. Now, in the days that followed my father's passing, I've had so many people talk to me about my dad. And as I said, he was a, a man of very little words, but when he spoke, it's, he spoke with weight and volume. And so I was curious to get to know my, my dad through their experiences. And what I learned from what I learned was both surprising and comforting. I learned how he would help his neighbor of, you know, 25 years by mowing his lawn whenever they couldn't do it. I learned how he would drive around an older friend who didn't have a car all day to help him get around and to keep him company. I learned that he gave everything that he had in his wallet to help out an old friend from college whom he hasn't seen for 35 years. I even learned recently that when he was younger, he punched out some kid for beating up his younger brother at school. I've also come to find out that he had a very keen sense of humor and that he was extremely sensitive and sentimental. This has been the common refrain from everyone whom I've spoken to since his passing. And in these brief conversations with them, I've learned to see him as more than just my dad or just dad, but I got to know him as Ben. And so in the spirit of this memorial, I'd like to share a very special memory that I have of Ben. Um, I was around 10 years old, and um, my dad took me out of school one day. I, I don't remember what specifically the reason. I don't know if it was a doctor's appointment or whatever, but needless to say, it, was, it didn't happen very often. And I remember uh, going to the Eagle Rock Plaza, which is just up the street, and we walked into the KB toy store. And I remember walking inside and just passing by all these like Lego sets and you know, He-Man action figures and G.I. Joes, all the things that I wanted but we just couldn't afford. And I remember we landed in front of this video game counter, uh, the video game counter. And I just looked around and, and he leaned down to me and he said, so what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, are you, is, this, is this real? Is there, are, we, are we doing this? I was a little confused, but he just nodded yes, like whatever you want. Now, I got to tell you, this has never happened. And it's, like, it's a common joke with me and my sister where every time it's Christmas or it's someone's birthday, we'll always look at each other and say, hey, what did you get? And that common reply back is nothing. So I had to jump at the chance, so I pointed right at the Sega Genesis behind the clerk and said, I want that. And so my dad just smiled at me and turned back to the sales clerk and told him to bag up the Sega Genesis. I couldn't believe it. Did we really just buy a Sega Genesis with Altered Beast game that was worth $189? That was a lot of money back then. And I was so overwhelmed with joy that I, just, I cried a little bit. And I just remember going home and just holding on to that, that box and just thinking, wow, this is amazing. It wasn't until recently that I realized why I cried that day. That memory stands out the most to me because I don't have a lot of memories with my dad. Memories where it was just him and me. And I think... The reason why it stands out to me the most is because he made me feel special that day. He made a little boy who had been struggling for so long to find his place in this world, in this new country, to feel seen and to feel like I existed and was thought of and more importantly loved. So I choose to think that that was his way of communicating that to me. My memories of him are littered with these acts of service that he gave to us as a family. He always led with actions and not with his words. And so I hope that sharing this core memory that I have of him and all those hundreds and thousands of stories we as a family have yet to share with you, that you could see that he was more than just Ben. 
He was also our dad. Rest in peace, dad. Thank you. Please stand and let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant on how to be described in the book of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Do not fear, I am with you. Do not be anxious, I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. A reading from Paul to the Romans. 
Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness in life. For we have been united with him in a death like his, we certainly be united with him in a res- resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that this body of sin might be destroyed, and we, may, we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died it is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also would live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On one occasion, Jesus spoke thus I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We began the celebration with the eulogy. Um, I never used to do that until I got to this parish. One of my classmates said, Oh, I always do it at the beginning because then it makes more sense. We, we, we're praying for all those uh, qualities and things that we heard in the eulogy. And I thought, that's right. They, they're usually tacked on at the very end as if it's not important. And, and I think it's really kind of the heart of the celebration, the eulogy. And I'd like to point out two things that struck me uh, most, not because they're important, because they struck me, but, but maybe they make a connection uh, and, and they seem to me to speak to the heart of, of Ben as he has been described. Um, first of all, the fact that he came here from the Philippines left his homeland. And I heard in the eulogy that he missed his parents very much and he missed the Philippines. My parents uh, grew up in Kansas. Their, uh, Grandparents were from Germany, went to Russia, and then came to the United States. And I was 40 when my, when I, I, my father was 40, hello, when I was born. And um, so that was already uh, four, uh, three brothers and one sister before me. Um, and so when I was born, I, I uh, was already uh, very much a part of the California scene. L.A., I was born here myself. But... Even after all those years, after all those years, I'd still hear my father say, I'm going home in two months. Talking about going back to Kansas to see his parents, his family, his extended family, and friends, all the memories that were so important to him. I'm going home. Well, why do people leave Kansas? And why do people leave the Philippines? And you said it again in the eulogy, to make a better life for their children. 
So they are willing to die a little bit, to let go of what roots them and anchors them and, and was a great love in their life, just to make sure that their family could have a better life. I think that's extraordinary. And I think it goes to the heart of the Christian message. That's what that's all about. It's not just about dying, but why we die and how we die. And then that also speaks to the gospel today that, that was chosen for me to read. And Jesus says, he, he, he tells people about the Father and that he has knowledge of the Father and that, that people really could only come to know the Father through him. And then he says this to them. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And if one were to say, well, what is his yoke? What is his burden? I believe it's that, mostly. It's a cross. And one might say, well, how is that easy or that burden light? But I think... What Jesus was referring to, most of all, was his yoke of love and service. And Jesus uh, could take it to that moment. And what I love so much about the cross, and I'll refer to it later, but what I love so much about it is not that Jesus died on it or just how he died, uh, that he died on it, but mostly how he died on it. Because with all the abuse that led him to that moment, all of the rejection, all of the suffering, all of the pain, all of the hatred, all of the injustice, he had every right to, to hang on that cross and hate in return, but he didn't. His words were, Father, forgive them all, they know not what they do. And how he could look into the face of such injustice and hatred and love and forgive is, is just extraordinary. And if we can carry that burden, that, that yoke, that we can learn from it, and learn to embrace the cross. And I think that's what Ben, his wife, really did. They left what they loved so they could love even more and give even more to their children. But there was one other moment that struck me as, as really very powerful. And it was when um, you were saying, I repeat, just... In the days that followed my father's passing, I've had strength to talk to me about my dad. He's a man of few words. I knew how he stubborn he was, etc. But he, he mentioned how uh, that he, on this occasion he pulled his son aside and shared with him his regrets, his difficulties, his fears, his pains, his struggles. I've celebrated a lot of funerals in my life as a priest, 46 years of it. And I seldom hear that, especially about a man. Women, and I don't mean this in any way except complimentary, are much more communicative usually, and they share their feelings. Um, I mean, I think a woman has no problem with crying on Tuesday, and you say, well, why are you crying? Well, it's Tuesday. I Tuesdays, you know, they're, they're very in touch with their feelings and they're, they're very comfortable to share them. But men, generally speaking, not a rule, tend to hold them in. We've been trained to do that. We're, we're trained to think that if we share feelings and we were to cry, that that somehow is weakness. And really, it's just realness. It's realness. But how beautiful to have that memory um, and especially if it was rare, that makes it, for me, even more powerful that a dad would, would pause to pass on to his son, really, some of the wisdom that he learned in life through the pain and the struggle and the sufferings and, and the hurts and, and the missing of his homeland and of his family. Because, you know, those are the things that teach us the most, and those are the things that probably change our lives the most. It isn't all the joyful moments, although those are wonderful, but it's the difficult moments, the moments where we are almost forced to grow and change. We heard and sang again and again in that responsorial psalm uh, based on the um, 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, but that refrain is just a rather beautiful and unique one. Shepherd me, O God, Beyond my wants, 
beyond my fears from death into life. That's what we say to Jesus. Shepherd me, O Lord, beyond my wants, beyond my fears from death unto life. But I'd like to just change a little emphasis on that. Shepherd me, O Lord, beyond my fears, beyond my wants, from my death into life. And again, um, I think most parents get this. And I think most parents, even if they don't begin like this, develop into this because I think parenting, just for the most part, does it to you. But I think uh, the truth is, as was expressed in this eulogy, here was a man who uh, was serious and took life seriously and worked hard and was able to teach that to his family. But he had to go through his fears and his wants and let go of them. And that is, in itself, a kind of a dying. And, you know, we all know that we come to this death. But I'll tell you, it's the everyday deaths that prepare us for this one anyway. And it's the everyday deaths that make us who we really are when we deal with our fears and our wants and we're willing even to let go of many of them so that others may grow and receive even more. So, I know that today we're celebrating Ben, obviously. And this death and this mass of resurrection is all about him, all about him. And at the same time, it's not. The way it is not is the way it involves you. And I would say especially immediate family, wife, children, grandchildren, uh, extended family, very close friends. This is all about you having to let go of the physical presence of someone that you have loved and someone who has loved you and who has died for you and gone through fears and wants and let go of many things just so his friends and his family could have more. And so I think that as you become aware of that, of course, the strongest feeling on the day of funeral and the days and weeks and months following is the grief, the sorrow, the sadness. But what I hope, as expressed in the eulogy today, that you grab onto even more deeply, I would say, is gratitude. Gratitude for all that he was, for all that he gave you, for all that he showed you and modeled to you, and for all the ways that he made your lives better. If you can deeply connect with that gratitude and share those stories of gratitude, I think that is the way that you'll most support one another during a difficult time, a time of grieving. And also, I think it's the way that you most honor and ennoble Ben by your gratitude, appreciation for all that he has given to you. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. And our response after each intercession will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Ben, believed, ben received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Ben was nourished at the table of our Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and wait the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment 
rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of my father, Ben Ui, seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Ben, strengthening our hope so that we may live in expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as the gifts will be prepared for Eucharist. Pray, my sisters and brothers, our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Alejandro, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any fault, human fault, have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, and the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, all the clergy, all your people. Remember your servant, Alejandro, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, with Bernard, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as one family of faith in the words that Jesus has taught us all. As we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us turn to those near us and share a sign of Christ's peace. This is Jesus the Christ who has come to take away our sin and bring us life eternal. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Because usually at a funeral there are guests that maybe have never been here before. Uh, if you're not receiving communion today, please feel free to be seated and just relax. And there will be two ministers here, and I'll come to each side here and to this side. Or you, okay. Body of Christ, body of Christ. Both of you, right to the center. Okay, center.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Alejandro may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. At the end of our Catholic funeral services, we always share these, uh, final, this final commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother Alejandro. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And in this song of farewell, I'd like to invite you to share this response. It goes like this. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself, and may angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. I am... Um, always like to add at the end of the funeral what I think is really true. Um, uh, the first year is the hardest year uh, after someone dies, the raw year, because every one of you will have your own birthday, his birthday, Father's Day, Christmas without him, Easter without him, uh, anniversary of marriage. All of those moments in the first time around are really, really tough. And I really think it's very important to uh, reach out to each other. I, I know you do that, and you will do that, but uh, to appreciate how much that means. I remember a woman in my first parish. I was a brand-new young priest, and uh, this woman was, was a very emotional woman all the time, and uh, tears came real easy for her. And she told me that when her father died, she was the only girl, and that she was uh, daddy's girl, you know. And um, that every single day she cried, and her friends knew her well, so they called her for about three months. And somebody out there must have told them three months is the cutoff date. They stopped calling her. And she still cried every day, and she said, you know, Father Perry, the difference is this. After they stopped calling me, I cried alone. Um, I would just suggest that you don't underestimate, especially on those special days, you know, on Christmas that you'll celebrate, call the family, because... I'm quite sure they'll miss him a lot on this particular first Christmas. Um, and even though it continues in life, it's not quite as raw as the first year. And it makes me think um, in a really intentional and explicit way. In the first letter of John, his uh, letter way at the end of the Bible, he says this, and it's, it's what I call a, a kind of definition of God because it really doesn't define God. But he says it like that. He says, God is love. He doesn't say he loves or will love or, or could love. He is love. And then he says, where, where he who lives in love lives in God and God in him or her. And then he says, wherever there is love, there is God. So I would propose to you that to reach out to each other, of course it's out of love, and just ask, how are you doing out without dad, without grandpa, without your husband? How are you doing? Um, that that act of love is really making God present in a very beautiful way, very powerful way, very profound way, and maybe more healing than you could imagine. The Lord be with you. Let us extend our hands and share this final prayer. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ben in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he rises with him. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon, upon Ben in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Ben forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Ben, and all of your family and friends gathered with you on this most special day. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.